On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1968. We're going to be taking a look at Judith Durham, and she's going to be performing Danny Boy. <laughs> Oh, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, I think we'll watch this the whole way through and then we'll get into the analysis afterwards. And I'm going to leave in the intro where Judith is explaining about the meaning of the song. But let's get Judith up on screen and see how she gets on. I'll just tell you something about this next song. It's a song that was first sung in Ireland by a man who had three sons. The eldest two have both been killed in the war, and now his third son is leaving home. It's a song will mean, which will mean a great deal to anyone who has experienced the heartache of being parted from loved ones. It's the story of Danny Boy. Oh, Danny Boy. From Glen to Glen and down the mountainside, the summer's gone and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you must go, and I must. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow and all the valley's hushed and white with snow. It's When ye come and all the flowers are dying, if I am dead, as dead I well may be, you come and find. Oh 
And there we have it. What a great vocal performance that was. Unfortunately, the video on YouTube cuts out really quickly, so that's why I've stopped it there. But it's a strong indication of the performance when a video cuts out too quickly at the end, and it feels like you wanted time or more time to absorb what's just happened. This is one of those performances. Judith's voice in this performance is so clean. She gets such a clean vocal cord connection all the time. She has that consistency throughout her range tonally. And when we're looking at some of the notes here, we're going down as far as a B3 and we're going as high as an E5. And that E5 that she hits it's so controlled. She just releases it into her head voice and it is great to hear this kind of vocal technique. We're about to hear it even more clearly because I have isolated the vocal. So we'll get into that. So I've taken it back to the beginning of the song and just to elaborate on that intro that Judith gives because I think a lot of people will attribute this song to having Irish roots and the lyrics were actually written by Frederick Weatherly and he was an English lawyer but he set those lyrics to a traditional Irish melody and that was Londonderry Air. So I think that's where the confusion might come in and this is why it does have that Irish sound to it because it is an Irish melody. But I'm not sure whether it was written from first-hand experience, something that Frederick had gone through, or whether it was fictional. But just this song and that lyrical content is something that a lot of people can relate to. Let's take a closer look at Judith's voice. And if you haven't seen one of these videos before with the pitch monitoring software on screen, it's going to represent Judith's voice as a yellow line and the pitch is on the left hand side from low to high. So the higher the note is, the higher the line will go and sometimes it has to move to find the notes, but you'll get the hang of it. We'll have a listen to it and see what we can hear. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. So straight away, You'll start to notice the pitch accuracy that we've got going on here. I've isolated the vocal as well so that we can appreciate it on a deeper level. And just taking it back here, we're starting you know, just sharp of the E4, but this is all going to be sounding pitch perfect and a little bit sharp of the D4 there, but there's such a natural vibrato in her voice as well. So when we take it back, you'll hear it coming in all the time. Let's have another listen. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Whenever there's a note that is held for an extended amount of time, we get that calling and that wobble of vibrato. And the frequency of her vibrato is so nice to listen to. And when I say that, what I mean is the speed of it, the oscillations, as it were, of her voice having that change in pitch happen at a point that is not too slow and not too fast. It sits in a really nice spot, almost that sweet spot of contemporary singing, but with great vocal technique. Let's listen on. From Glen to Glen. And there we had this glen, and she actually went glen. She started the vibrato on the glare of glen, and then went glen, and continued it on with then the closing of the N at the end of the word. Really interesting that she kept it the whole way through the word. I mean, sometimes singers will go glen and then add the vibrato right at the end of it. But you could see there, and we can see it on the screen, she's bang on with the G4. And as soon as she starts saying the word, the vibrato comes straight in. And down the mountainside. And again, this side, the wobble, the side is at that kind of frequency, but when I say about it not being too fast, not being too slow, the opposite of that would be going side and making it slower. So the peaks 
if you're looking at the picture monitoring software, the peaks here would be further apart because it's a slower vibrato, whereas she's just brought those peaks to where they are. And I don't think anybody listening to this would say that it's a bad sounding vibrato. And there are many, many vocal coaches who have been searching for the perfect frequency of vibrato. Whether that exists or not is up for debate. I think that every singer has their own unique vibrato. That's what makes them sound like them. And to say that there's a perfect one out there, I think just leaves just no room for personal expression, having different voices, because then everyone would try and get the same frequency. But when you're talking about a natural vibrato, it just happens at whatever rate it does. And that's why you get so much personality in the sound. And we certainly get that here with Judith, but let's listen to this vibrato again. Actually, this is a little bit wider than we've had previously when I'm talking about the side. There's quite a wobble in there, but it's all about the frequency. And yeah, it's not too fast. We're not sounding like a sheep here, which is something that can happen. But let's jump back into it. I do want to just mention about the sliding between notes that we get as well, that glissando that we've mentioned so many times on the channel, but it's pretty much throughout this whole performance where the lines are joined up on screen and it's just all one vocal phrase. So blending notes together and sliding from one to the next, not cutting off a note and jumping to it like you would have on a keyboard or a piano where you just get one note and then it stops and then the next note starts. So so we get this really nice slide. We've actually got a more exaggerated example of it, I think right at the beginning of the song, which I'll take it back and we'll have a look at that. Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes. There we go. I mean, it's not really over the top, but if I slow that down, you'll be able to hopefully as well get a deeper appreciation of what the pitch monitoring software is doing because you'll hear the slide and you'll see the yellow line on screen ascend, go higher in pitch because that's what's happening with Judith's voice. The pipes. So it's that that slide up is here on the screen so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense so we'll jump back into it and look out for those slides that are just intercepted by really accurate notes that judith is holding oh danny boy oh danny boy i love you so I mean, this is one of those performances that I could go through just second by second because the amount of technique and accuracy that we've got going on. I love this little rundown that we have. Oh, Danny boy. It's almost using that vibrato as we descend, having, oh, Danny boy. That's the vocal phrase that we've got and the notes. But she's got that, oh, the vibrato, oh, Danny She's kind of throwing it in there. I'm slowing it down to exaggerate it, but she's still keeping a little bit of this wobble in her voice. That vibrato is just bleeding its way in. It's such a natural technique that she's got, but we'll get back into it and I'll let it play on for a little bit longer uh, so that this video doesn't go on for years. I love you so. And just to contradict myself, we can see that we've actually got an A3 here. I referenced a B3, uh, which is here earlier on, just talking about her range, and we actually go a tone lower than that. So we've got an even broader range going on, and I'll let it play through, and I'll stop it at the E5 so you guys know where this high note of the song is. And I shall hear those songs you tread. And all my Again, listen to the slides that we've got, and we're up to a C5 now. So it means that when we're 
going back to that A3, we are over an octave higher than that. The A4, which is an octave higher, would be here. So you can see that we're three semitones higher, one, two, three. So already we've got such range going on, but it's that tonal consistency which just makes it sound great because it's relevant to her lower register. And I know that I have done a video on The Seekers previously. And of course, Judith was in that. This is 1968. So it was around the time that she was starting to go her own way and starting her solo career after The Seekers. But you can check out that video independently if you want to. It'll be here on the channel somewhere. But let's continue. Will warmer, sweeter be Again, that same slide down with vibrato, and we can see it even more clearly here. Look at the way that her voice is still waving as she's going down. So I'll take that back and we'll just have a little listen to the notes so that I'll give a little demonstration of what's going on. It's that sweeter. Like, ah. So it's that wobble that descends. It's not going, ah, ah. it's going, ah. there's a wobble in there. It's really cool to listen to, but it is great to see it on screen because it means that you guys can see exactly what's going on pitch wise. So when you get, ah, and it falls down, you get to see every one of these waves. So it's really cool to look at because it means that Everybody can get an appreciation of what's going on. You don't have to have an ear for music or even if I'm not explaining it very well, you can see what's going on. We do have the ranges on screen as well. If you want to look over to those, we have the A3, which we referenced earlier, and that's the bottom end of the mezzo-soprano range, as you can see. And now the E5, if we take our pointer all the way up to here, that's where we are. Uh, you know, right at the top of the contralto range, but more mezzo-soprano range, top end of, and into the soprano range. So, We've got such an expanse of notes here that are all the same in how they sound, which is the most important thing. I'm just going to bring in the backing for the last part. Until you come to And there we have it. I love the arrangement in the background as well because we just end on a C sus two and then we, we resolve at the end. So it's a really cool way to finish. And when I'm saying about the end of the song in a cool way to finish, having a listen to, I mean, it's such an emotive way and just the notes, putting the melody together to end with the end of that major scale. So have another listen. You come to me. It's that na na na. So if we're going do re mi fa so la ti do la ti do, it's just the end of your major scale. Same thing you'll find, I mean, in loads of compositions, but most famously, um, somewhere over the rainbow where we have um, somewhere over the rainbow. Why, why, oh, why can't I? Why can't I? Exactly the same three notes that we end with ascending. Once hearing this, it's difficult to switch between songs that have the exact same chord and melody to them, <laughs> but just different words. But there's a reason why it's used because ending on a high is what you want to have. I just want to point out something about that last vocal phrase as well, because it's great breath management by Judith. She starts the line and then take, you can see here, she takes a breath in this space 
And when she continues on, we can see that it's all part now of the same breath. These notes that she blends together by sliding from one to the next, from the B4 to the C5. This is a slide up with the same breath. She actually throws in a double slide. Uh, when she goes up to the C5 to begin with, it's all part of that same breath, but then she just dips down and comes back up to the same point. <laughs> And it's great because we can see it clear as day on the screen where she's bang on the C5 with vibrato and then just comes down literally 50 cents, you know, right between notes. Between these lines at 440 hertz tuning, you have 100 cents between them and she's gone down, you know, exactly halfway, then back up to the C5. But thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at. I'm hoping that by looking at the video, it's not gonna get blocked on copyrights. That sometimes happens. If it does, then I'll blur it out, which I'm tending to do more and more recently. But as always, keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!